Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. A few weeks ago, we installed a huge outdoor speaker system from OSD Audio consisting of eight eight inch wall speakers, four eight inch rock speakers, and a pair of 12 inch burial subwoofers. That's right, I now have dual 12 inch subs buried in my backyard living area. If you missed the install video of the speakers and subs or any of the four previous videos from this project, I'll link to a playlist in the card above as well as in the description below and also at the end of this video. So in this video, we'll be connecting the OSD multimedia audio streaming server and three OSD amplifiers that will be powering the entire system. Now, before we get into the install, I want to give a big thanks to OSD for sponsoring this video series. So enough talking, let's get to installing. So here we have the four OSD units that we'll be installing for the outdoor speaker system. Up top, we have the OSD SRT4, which is a four zone multimedia audio streaming server. We'll be using this to stream high resolution music up to 24 bit 192 kilohertz to the outdoor speaker system. It has built in Wi-Fi and ethernet and we'll be controlling it via the OSD player app. Below that is the XMP 500 DSP amplifier. Now this provides 125 watts by two continuous and 250 watts peak into eight ohms. Now we'll be using this to power the eight AP850 or as we like to refer to it, the Youthman wall of sound. Next, we have the SMP1000 DSP amplifier. This provides 400 watts continuous, 1000 watts peak at four ohms, which will be powering the dual 12 inch burial subwoofers. And lastly, we have the OSD MX880, which is an 80 watt by eight channel amplifier that we'll be using to power the four rock speakers. Now, since we only have four speakers, we'll be bridging each pair of channels to provide 160 watts to each rock speaker. So if we spin around to the rear of the units, we'll now begin connecting the components. Now while making connections, I do recommend not having the power cables connected to prevent any short circuiting during the installation. We'll connect the power at the end of this video. And before we make any connections, I always like to think through the flow of signal in a system. So in this case, the SRT4 will be our main source. We're gonna come out of the SRT4 into each amplifier via the OSD RCA cables, and then out of each one of those amplifiers connected to 14 gauge OSD speaker wire to each speaker. So let's start with the SRT4. If we look at the rear of the SRT4 streaming server, you'll see that it has four separate zones. The SRT4 will allow us to turn on each zone independently or play all zones at the same time, as well as have different sources playing for each zone, and this can all be controlled via the OSD player app. Now in my setup, we're going to use zone one for one pair of rock speakers. We'll use zone two for the second set of rock speakers. Zone three will be used for the two subwoofers and eight wall speakers. And zone four will be used to stream high resolution audio into my theater room. Throughout this installation, I'll be referring to this PDF document that OSD provided for me. As shown in the first video of this series, this PDF is a free service that OSD provides to each one of their customers. So you'll know exactly how to connect the components and speakers in your system. The OSD team can help you design an outdoor speaker system that both meets your needs and also your budget. So first we need to connect the SRT media streamer to the SMP 1000 DSP that will be powering the two 12 inch subwoofers. To do this, we simply connect one end of a pair of OSD RCA cables from the zone three output on the SRT4 and we'll connect that to the line in on the SMP 1000 DSP. So as you can see here on the cables, we've got a red dot and a white dot. So we wanna match that up to the red and white outputs. So we'll connect one here, the other one here, and then the other side, we're gonna to connect to the line in right here. 
Again, same thing, white and red. So white is going to be left, which will be the top. And the red will be the bottom. Looking back at the PDF, during the install of the speakers, you can see here that we connected both subs to a single speaker cable that will then be connected to the speaker terminals on the SMP1000 DSP. Now I'm using Sewell Banana Plugs as they make for an easy and clean installation, which I'll link to down in the description below. During the speaker install, we labeled each speaker cable with colored electrical tape before fishing them through my exterior wall. So we simply connect that to the SMP1000 DSP speaker terminals, matching up the red wire to the positive terminal and the black wire to the negative terminal. Now later on, we'll be adding a crossover setting inside the SMP1000, probably around 60 Hertz, so that frequencies 60 Hertz and below will be sent to the two subwoofers and anything above 60 Hertz will be sent to the eight wall speakers. Now, since the RCA signals are unpowered, we can daisy chain the SMP1000 DSP to the XMP500 DSP that will be powering our eight wall speakers. To do this, we connect a second OSD RCA cable from the line out on the SMP1000 DSP and we connect the other end to the main line in, which are the two middle RCA inputs on the XMP500 DSP. Again, you wanna make sure that you match up the white dot with the left channel and the red dot with the right channel. If we look back at the PDF, you can see that during install, we used my existing pair of speaker wires to wire each set of four speakers in series parallel to keep the impedance of the speakers at eight ohms and to also simplify the install by not having to climb back into my hot Florida attic to run six additional speaker wires. Now for my setup, we'll only be using the left and right channels labeled speaker A to connect to the four left channel speakers and the four right channel speakers. We'll simply connect the left speaker cable to the left channel, making sure the red wire is connected to the positive terminal and the black cable is connected to the negative terminal. And then we connect to the right channel the same way. So here we wanna make sure that we match up the positive with the positive up top and the negative on the bottom. And we'll connect our second wire just the same. The MX880 is an 80 by eight channel amplifier. Now, since we only need four channels, we'll be bridging or combining each pair of channels so that we can provide 160 watts to each rock speaker. We first need to make sure that each zone is set to the line in position. So here we want to just make sure that each one of these switches is in the up position, which is says line in. Since we are bridging each set of channels, we need to move the stereo bridge switch to the bridge position for each zone. To connect the SRT4 to the MX880, we're going to use two pair of OSD RCA cables. We're going to use zone one to provide the signal to one pair of rock speakers and zone two to provide the signal to the second pair of rock speakers. To connect the first pair of rock speakers, we will connect the left channel of zone one on the SRT4 to the left input on zone one of the MX880 amplifier. Next, we'll connect the right channel of zone one on the SRT4 to the left input on zone two of the MX880. Now remember, we're only using the left channel in bridged mode. To connect the second pair of rock speakers, we'll connect the left channel of zone two on the SRT4 to the left input on zone three of the MX880 amplifier. And lastly, we'll connect the right channel of zone two on the SRT4 to the left input on zone four of the MX880 amplifier. So now we're going to connect the four rock speakers to the MX-880 amplifier. 
To connect the left channel of the first pair of rock speakers, we connect the negative lead, which is the black cable of the speaker wire, to the R minus terminal using a small flathead screwdriver. And then we connect the positive lead, which is the red speaker wire, to the L plus terminal. Now using the same method, we can then connect the right speaker of the first pair of rock speakers to zone two, and then the left speaker of the second pair of rock speakers to zone three, and finally the right speaker of the second pair of rock speakers to zone four. Now just for the sake of time in this video, I will not be installing the speakers for zone two, three, and four, but you understand the process of how you would do that. So now that we have the SRT4 and the three amplifiers connected, we can connect each power cable and turn each unit on. In the next video of this series, we'll get the SRT4 connected to my network, dial in the settings of each amplifier, and I'll show you how to set up and use the OSD player app and get the system fired up. Now, if you missed any of the videos in this series so far, you can click here on this playlist to see each one of those Make sure you're subscribed to the channel as I produce weekly content and I'll have more awesome videos coming later this week. And as always, you guys be blessed and we'll catch you in the next video.